okay yesterday we have discussed how to add a text box and how to add a password box then we have a check box and we have discussed about radio button today we'll go and discuss about rest of the <coughs> controls okay the next control is it's a drop down like if you open this side you can see that there is a course is a drop down like uh, if you want to select from list of option then you have to uh, how you can going to add this kind of control in your page html form means the use of drop down or you can call it a select box or single uh, single drop down whatever you can call it this control is used for select one item between list of item means you will give a option to user and this option contain multiple but user only going to select only one like this uh, radio button In radio button we have multiple option but here you can only select one okay but in case of a drop down what will happen you will going to display in a drop down concept like one uh, same as a text box but only option is there is a drop down option is available here okay let's go i'll show you how you can add a drop down in your html page okay let me go and add a drop down you forgot about all these things this is yesterday classes topic today we are going to add here a drop down okay let me add a code h2 okay guys let me save it drop down okay what i'll do let me uh, clear uh, like uh, yesterday data and create a fresh one okay because it will be little bit uh, you will see all the data here let me quickly do all these things I can see that we are going to work on this drop down today as you know to add a text box we require this input syntax same as if you want to add a drop down you need a select select uh, tag means same way you have to add a select and select start and select end rested I told you one thing input start and you add some attribute then input end now we have a question what is this kind of tag and what is this kind of word tag okay this is a pure tag pure tag in the sense what the tag is there means this element is there you want to add the content in between this tag everywhere you have to remember if the tag will start and end by slash symbol then your content should be placed this place okay but if your tag start and end with the same line or same tag only then you have to remember that all your data should be add in this attribute only just remember these two basic difference between this full tag and this short tag this is called short end tag this is called a full tag I mean this is normal html tag any places if you see the tag start and tag end the same name means like h1 start and h1 end select start select end or html start html end html start means anywhere in your html if you see the tag start and tag end you have to know that the content of this tag will be go inside between these two tag start and tag end whereas if your tag will come close in same line like input start and input end means in this type of tag you cannot add any data outside the tag whatever data you want to add that tag that data you have to add inside as an attribute like the short tag like break break there is no 
use of a break break means it is going to give a line break right if i save it and it will give a line break means one break break there is no content right it's just a, you want to put a break point for that there is no st like you will expect br start and br end right you have to look like that but the case is here you are not going to enter any data if any tag contain any data then the tag should be looks like this is the data and if the tag don't contain any data and there is a special purpose for that then you have to use a sort and tag like br and input and like hr i'm going to explain all the tag now one by one in input you have to enter the data in this text box right because you are not entering the data outside the text box for that reason the input is going to complete that one only same way break means you want to add a break to the control means after that you will go for new line in your word you are writing enter right when you add enter automatically your cursor go to new line the same way in html there is no concept of enter in uh, new line if you enter n number of a line also still not going to understand all these things for html to add a new line in your page then you have to add a br tag br tag stand for break point okay break the same way if you want to add a like um, horizontal line to you to any places in your control in your uh, sorry html then you have to use hr hr means horizontal rule if i refresh you can see that there is a small horizontal rule displaying here right that is the use of hr these tags don't contain any data for that these are the short hand tags but whereas h1 body head select all contain the data more data for that reason these are the design of these two type of syntax two type of L tag one is short hand tag one is long hand tag or normal tag okay input break all these are short hand tag you have to use for other size select text area all are the normal tag let me go and explain all these things select means let me remove all these things first select means if you want to add any kind of drop down then you require a select now the question in this example you can see the list of item here okay then the the things will be how we are going to add the list of item in this drop down because you can see that if i click it here it's not going to display anything right and how will you display it here for that you have to use the tag called option option means as in the like one of the class i told like ol and li right ol tag in ol tag in fact that we have a li same as select tag if you want to add any kind of item item means this item like one item right if you want to add any item inside a select class select control then you have to add call option same as ol li ul li right option tag contain because option tag start option tag end means it's contain a value to display any value in a drop down you have to write that text here suppose uh, i don't write uh, i don't write anything like suppose uh, s save it you can see that i am able to see html same way if you want to add another item suppose css another item javascript or angular react then if i refresh you can able to see that i can able to see all the drop down here okay means in the select if you want to add the item item means these are the selected items okay for that you have to use the option tag option tag required one of the data inside this option tag start and option tag end as like h1 and h, h, h1 start h1 end same way you have to add the data inside this option tag okay now you can see how i can able to see a drop down you can add n number of option here you can do that now now there is a now there is a question now 
you remember suppose i'm just going to into a little bit uh, in depth into application you know that each and every application suppose you are selecting one you selecting one of the option maybe this option coming from database okay html css javascript angular or are coming from database and you know that each in database each and every record contain its own id like html should be 1 css will be 2 javascript will be 3 angular 4 react 5 means in database each and every suppose list of item contain one on one on primary key like this is the key for this html means for your for your record identification you need a code for that in that case in html option if you want to add any id or any kind of a code for the specific item then you have to use concept of value means I, i'll explain don't be confused here value means this this one means this is a hidden data suppose html will be one means when you save it when you submit this form what will happen the data is going to the server for this select for this drop down will be one means whenever you define any value attribute to a option this value attribute is the id for this particular item means suppose you are binding list of a codes from your database and you know that for each and every database the item contain a primary key and this primary key suppose one for html two for css three for javascript right and when user want to submit the form you want that id right you don't require the name because name is anytime it can be changed but you require the this id in that case how can going to bind that id to your option means if you mention this value attribute then what will happen in that case the select option the value is not going to display any, anywhere only this content is going to display but when you post the data to the server that time in server going to access the, instead of html it will going to access the this value you can add any kind of value here okay you can add any kind of value here it's up to you but just remember in future when you're developing an application any kind of react uh, suppose java any application or angular you are developing in that case when you call the api from the database you will you will get the name as well as the id of that record right to bind the id to a option then you have to use the value property always remember for designing it's there is no nothing used okay but for a programmatically uses you have to use the value attribute the value attribute is a basic requirement of a select because whatever you will select right how the how you know that whatever suppose you select javascript when you post it how your api know that whatever you select they cannot get the name right they only get the value always remember in your mind whenever in your, you are developing any application using html that time always be recommended to add a value attribute in a select otherwise what will happen when you submit the form then your data will go as blank always remember you can you, when you post the data the select is not going to send this data always send this value attribute uh, as i told yesterday this input contain the value attribute right input value attribute yesterday we discussed right the same way the input value attribute whatever the value attribute in a select one if you want to send any value to the server or you want to select anything then it's a value attribute means for multiple option if you want to define a unique value for each and every item then you have to go for the value attribute okay which is the basic of you have to understand about a select clear okay <clears throat> Then you have to always remember the value one is used for send the drop down value or this select value to the server as well as your input the same way yesterday we discussed is select we have a name attribute as well as our id attribute as well as our visible attribute there is no read only attribute here okay just remember there is no read only the read only it's only for text box
Now you will ask me by default, by default, the HTML is selected. I just want to select by default this option, this JavaScript. How will I do that? For that, we have to use selected equal to selected. See that? I, I'll explain all these things. I told you, you can, if you don't add any, suppose you want to, by default, when you add any item, what will happen? By default, what is the top item that is going to display by default? Okay, it's always. And suppose you want to add, so like, uh, is your application option, suppose select course. Right, select course. Then you are going to display all these things. Just imagine, and one of the cases you require to when user open the application, that time defaultly, defaultly like the JavaScript should be selected. Just one of the scenario. Then how you can select it, the default option in a drop down? For that, you have to use the attribute called selected equal to selected. Got it? You have to use selected equal to selected. If you save it, then what will happen? If you refresh the page, then this one will be selected. Just a second, I will try one. Now, guys, one thing. Selected equal to selected, if you're writing this one also, it is valid. Otherwise, you can, if you write only selected also, it's a valid. You want to write the same thing again and again, like read only equal to read only. If you write read only also, it's fine. If you write read only equal to read only also, fine. The same way, if I write selected also, it's fine, or selected equal to selected also, that is fine. So this is called sort, sort and attribute. If you're using the same attribute, automatically browser know that selected means it will going to be selected. Okay. Now there is another use. As I told, I have, if I am going to use disabled, okay. Disabled means if you use disabled equal disabled the same as disabled. Okay? There is no difference. You can use anything. If I use disabled, what will happening? This entire drop down is getting, uh, entire drop down getting disabled. Okay. Now in your mind the question will arise. I want to disable a specific item or specific option then how we can do that suppose the any option you can add the attribute called disabled and save it if you refresh you can see that the css you cannot be selected like right? you cannot select the css so what we learn today in select you learn select is used to select one item from multiple options or items. Okay. Select is used to select one item from multiple options or item. It means you can call this as an option or you can call as an item. It's up to you what you are going to say. Then the next tag is option to add item inside inside drop down or select. Okay, you can call it drop down or select. We need option. Okay. What are the attribute of option? Option attribute. Last attribute will be text. Text attribute means whatever you will add in between this option will call as a text. This is called text. This is the value. Always you have to remember all these things in option. The data, whatever you adding between this tag start and tag end, we call as a text. Always remember this one because in future you required what is the text, what is the value. This is called as a text. This is called as a value. Text to display the data in option. Next one is value. Value to identify the option as uniqueness we need value attribute means 
in this option if you want to identify the uniqueness of the option then you have to insert uh, use the value attribute in the select one this is to default select the item or option we need select attribute attribute or like um, property both are equal okay same are disabled disabled to disable the item of okay guys got it what we discuss select is used to select multiple items going to select only one item from multiple options or multiple items then to add a item inside a drop down we require option option contain two part one is value part one is text part value part actually required to to give a uniqueness to a particular option okay and a, this one is a text you can add any text then if you want to add a default selection to a option then you have to use the selected one if you want to add a disable then you have to do a disabled one okay means you have to disable the item you have to do a disabled one this is the basic use of a select means if you know this one then you can able to select the, then you can use the this one right you can able to design this one let me see uh, is there a, is there using any kind of idea or something i'll show you no they are not using they are just getting the data okay okay anyone any doubt on this select one i think you all are clear right how to create a select one and how to add a uh, item inside this one okay now now there is another requirement what is the requirement <clears throat> now i want to segregate this option segregate means what i'll make it html css javascript javascript as a one group and angular and react is another group means my intention is here how to group a option now you can see that all the item displaying as a single line like singles like you displaying as a single one i just want to grouping this item means html css will go to one group angular and react is going to another group if inside a select in a drop down if you want to add in grouping then you have to use the concept of of opt group i'll explain all these things okay let me do one thing copy this one create another text okay the mark as h2 okay guys <clears throat> what i'll do let me group this one let me remove everything uh, i didn't value it's not required as of now uh, demo you can see we have all these things i just want to group html css javascript into one group and angular react into another group to add a group you have to use the syntax called opt group opt group means option group okay the full form of opt group is option group option group start option group end in option group contain the options okay you have to remember initially select content direct option now what will happen option group content the option the same way let me add another option group okay. let me save it if i refresh you can see that it's displaying blank and blank you have to you have to give some name right to give a option uh, group name you have to use the concept called label label suppose suppose web design and this one web 
and development. You can see that here. Initially, I have all the line item here. Here you can see that I have web design and web development. I have segregated this one. Suppose you want to display the uh, cities, uh, cities inside um, uh, our state. You will display all the states. Suppose uh, Telangana, Andhra, and all these things on display. Inside that, you want to display the all the cities. The same way, if you want to add the group inside a select, then you have to use the OPT group. OPT group is a uh, like normal tag where it's it has a one attribute called label. Label means if you want to display any kind of uh, if you want to display any text in the option group, you have to use the label tag. Okay. The same way, other things are not going to change. All are similar as option. You can add any attribute. All these things here. Okay. Now, in real time, you will get some another. Uh, suppose you want to suppose uh, disable this option. Disable. You want to disable this entire web design. Okay. Suppose your web designing course completed. Now you cannot uh, you cannot um, click this one. Only web development is available. Then how you can disable this option group? The same way we have attribute called disabled. To disable this one, what will happen? It is going to disable the entire option group. Okay, it's not going to go only group to option group. Means it's going to disable HTML, CSS, JavaScript, right? If you disable any of the item, any of the option group, automatically it will disable the entire option group section here. Right? Got it, right? For individual, you can add the individual or disable. But if you want to group disable, then you just need to add a disable attribute here. If you add a disable attribute, automatically this is entire going to be disable. Right? This is a basic of a drop down. Now you learn that you have a list of option. Now you want to uh, you have going to select only one. But as we explained yesterday, we have a checkbox and radio button, right? In radio button, you are going to select only one. In checkbox, you can select a multi like multiple. Now, in this case, I just want to create a drop down. In this drop down, you can select multiple. Okay, suppose you, you can also select, suppose you can select HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all these things. How we are going to do that? To do that, let me create another drop down here. This one called as multi select drop down. Means in the multi select drop down, what will happen? you can select multiple item okay let me see that how you can do that let me remove all these things guys uh, for that there is a single tag you have to add here only one attribute called multiple you can see that <clears throat> here same data you have in in drop down you have single means you have you are going to single one but in multiple drop down you have a list of option now the question how we are going to select the multiple option to select a multiple option you have to press the control then you have to select if on select same control same space you have to remove got it in drop down you have only one option in multiple drop down you have to select and if you want to select it will only select one if you want to select multiple then you have to click on control then you have to select then then it is going to be let's select the multiple one this is the only difference between a multiple drop down and a single drop down based on your uses based on your requirement you will give you will going to add this kind of control where you need to add the select where you need to add the multi multi select okay it's up to you you need to decide in which cases you are going to add but just imagine a difference is in in single drop down you can be able to select only one item but same as radio button in case of multiple drop down you are going to select the multiple item same as checkbox but if you want to add the group inside a drop down or multiple drop down then you have to go for option group
the option group content label to display any kind of a label or heading inside the drop down you have to use the label if you want to disable this drop down or in this op or, or this option group you have to use the disable attribute i'm repeating one by one because now we are going towards programming due to that you have to know that because in future you are not going to design a website right you have to do a development for development these are the control are a basic requirement you have to know all these things what i learn then option group contain the options each and every option has true attribute one is value another one is text text is open text you can add anything there is a value you can add a the value is for the identification of a option when you post the data to the server whatever value you mention here that is go go to the server then in select is content same attribute like name id disable etc as per all the control contain the same id it contains the same id okay anyone any doubt on this select one because these are the basic control for html development you have to know all these things i know that i am little bit slow because my intention to you have to learn in depth of each and every things because if you don't know then in future if you're writing the program real program then you will be get trouble okay now I think we have a cover most of the control now we have only two to three control left let's go and design that one only okay let me create new one Yesterday we have learned about single line text box, right? In single line text box means if you want to add any kind of single line data, then you input type as a single line, then you have to add a single line text box. Let's go and today we'll learn how you can going to add a multi-line text box. Means suppose you want to enter your address, suppose you want to enter your bio, or you want to enter any large large data inside a text box, then how we are going to add it. To add a multi-line text box in HTML, we have a tag called text area. If I add this kind of tag, you have to remember that the, the content will go inside this. Always you have to remember. If the tag start and end this tag, then you have to always remember the content will go this area. Okay. Let me save it and you can see I can able to see a text area. Okay, to add a content inside text area, whatever you are going to add inside this means if you go and add any content inside this, this area is going to display in between the text box. Got it? Okay, means in a text box, you have to mention the value attribute the same way in text area whatever you will write here then it will going to display inside this text area okay width height i'll i'll, I'll go for in css class i'll going to discuss about how we can design the width and height of a control how you can do that but today you have to just learn that text area means if you are going to add any kind of multi-line text box multi-line data in a text box then you have to use the text area the same attribute we have we have a name so we have a name attribute and um, we have id attribute these two attribute is common for all the controls you have to remember then we have the read only attribute why read only attribute we here because this is a text box we have a read only attribute okay we have a read only attribute here okay and same as disabled attribute disabled attribute here and we have placeholder also here let me check the placeholder Placeholder. Enter your school address. Remember always, placeholder only only display when you don't have text. Always remember. Okay. Means you can only display the placeholder when there is a when there is no value. If there is a value, 
suppose then it's not going to display always remember okay if i remove hello then it's going to display why it's not displaying it's going to display the placeholder you have to remember these things always placeholder just information about this control then what you learn today to learn today like how we are going to add a multiple drop multiple line text box in your html then we'll go for another one <clears throat> the last the second one is suppose in some of the cases you want to upload a file right in suppose in if you are using any kind of social media application social media there if you click the upload button or some select button the automatic pop-up is opening right and you are choosing the file in the same way how you can go and create a select select box in html for that we have a tag called input add a break here input i equal to file okay we learn input type text input type password input type um, suppose um, radio button check boxes right the same way if you create a form if you create an input and mark the type as file if you refresh you can see that we are able to display this kind of control if you click it it's going to display me the choose option right okay what you will choose what is the program that is different part but in your code if you want to choose if you want to display any file or upload option or if you user want to give an option to user choose then you have to give this you have to give this control okay this attribute uh, uh, this attributes like name id disable all these things exist you have to use up to your choice okay we have learned text text area then input as file then we will go for sir in this type file we can choose any type of file now yes yes in in file you can choose any kind of file but to restrict the file types all these things in the javascript we can handle that okay if you choose you can choose any kind of file here okay if you can choose anything it's up to you but to restrict the file type and all these things we have to use the the concept of javascript i know there is a concept called accept here but i i don't want to explain that one because anyhow if you choose also here people can able to change that one okay that i will explain javascript class and how we can go to restrict the file type when some if someone choose the file and select it suppose you want only text file or pdf file that time how we can restrict the user not to choose other files apart from your specified file that the programming we have to do okay next go and add the final one we called as buttons me add button how you can add a button to a html okay right for button we have to use the tag called button if i tag this tag and this tag you have to know that the content will go here suppose the content will be submit means whatever you will write it here it will looks like a button okay there are three types of button okay you have to remember all these things there are three type of button what are these buttons the buttons three type buttons one is submit one is button one is reset okay don't be trap on that all are looks like same there is no difference there is some little bit logical difference on that okay let me explain if i mention if i don't mention anything a button it will be submit button what is submit button i will going to explain input type equal to you can mark as submit it's not nothing happening here submit or you can type as button or you can type as a reset 
I'm going to explain what is the use of each and every one. Okay. Before, okay, you have to know that for add a button, you have to use the button tag and same attribute name, ID, all these things is there. You have to mention name and disable attribute also there. You have to know that. You, you, you when you write in the program, you automatically know that what are the attribute is exist. Okay. Now, before going into this submit and button and reset, we have to know what is a form because that one I did not explain it as of now. Okay. What is a form? Means, as I told earlier, now we are going a little bit technical. It's not a website designing. We are going for website development only. I told earlier, you have to create a form, right? Inside form, you have different different kind of controls okay and this control finally you have to submit okay right you have to submit button you have to submit this one right as i told this enter is a form means i am saying that in the same page you can also able to create another form right you can also able to another form then how you can differentiate between this form, sorry, how you differentiate between this form and this form. You got it? In a same page, you can also design n number of form. Just example, in this page, I can also able to design this form two times, right? Then how my code knows that this is one of the form and that is another one of the form. For that, to identify between two form, we have a tag called form tag. Let me introduce that one. So we have a tag called form tag. Form means area or boundary for a form. It's actually form means it is section, right? You can design any of the forms. Same way, this is whatever designing it here. This is one of the form. If I go now, how to add a form? then you have a simple syntax called form tag form tag form element but remember that whatever control you are adding in your html form in html page it may be text box drop down buttons textures anything you should have to add that control inside the form tag you have to remember because that time i am going to say you last Whenever you want to add any kind of control in your HTML page, you have to add that control inside the form tag. Because if you don't add the form tag, then this button submit, suppose you are designing a form, you need to submit the form, then the submit is not going to work. Okay. Means if you want to do any kind of data from this client side to server side in that case you have to design a form that form should be enclosed with this form tag okay means let me add this control inside this form guys this is little bit technical you have to remember all these things form tag is used to define a boundary for a form means whatever control is going to add inside a um, html it should be enclosed with a form let me add one text box here input type equal to text that should be some name I have defined a form inside the form i have this um, input type as a text another button is there let me write this button as reset i'll go from here to i'll go reset button and submit i'll go to explain reset okay the same i'll copy it here and paste it to top and make it reset but remember this two I have two button here one is this part another one inside the form part okay as you see it here 
this form contain one text box one button and the type is reset here another reset button what i'll do let me enter some name here suppose i am entering html if i want to click this reset what will happen without writing any code any HTML, any javascript code or any code i can reset the form whereas if i enter anything and click on reset nothing is happening you can see that that is the beauty of form got it means form give you a boundary inside that if you are adding any kind of button whatever submit button submit or normal button reset button that is going to behave in that way if you are going to add the same button outside the form is not having anything if you mention reset button or submit it's not going to work anything because button is tightly coupled with the form tag you clear the concept of button and form tag form means it's a boundary boundary for a form means whatever form we are going to design in future you have to remember that all your controls should be placed inside the form tag it is the basic of a form designing and we have a three kind of button one is type one is um, the type is reset and button and a submit as i told reset button is used to reset whatever data you will going to enter you click on reset it is going to reset the whatever value is going to enter whereas if i'm going to add another called as button right we have discussed three one reset button and submit right if i write as button it has no use it's just like a button okay reset button will reset the value whereas normal button it just looks like a button there is no use of this button means it just looks like a button but if you are using the button as submit here submit i think you cannot able to see if i click on submit you even see that my form is getting refreshed and my value is getting right here right if anyone know how to submit the data to the server submit means if from day one i'm saying right if you're creating a form you need to submit to the data to the server the same way if you want to send the data from this html form to server then you have to use this submit type button that is not going to work in click normal button it is not going to work in reset button reset is used for reset normal button is looks like a button there is no use this is actually special for client side application and the submit is used to submit the data from your html form to the server if people clear about these three reset button and submit reset is going to reset the data normal button is used to behave like a button there is no use of that one this is for a client side specifically third one is the submit the submit button is used to submit the form i am always telling form submit the form to the server now the question will come which server what is the method and all these things that the which server what is the method for that reason you have to know the basic concept of a http before going into like how the summit will work and all these things tomorrow i will going to explain the basic of a server and a client side architecture because if you want to understand how summit to work how we are going to send the data from this summit this html to your server then you have to know that how the server is work means how when you are sending a request from your from your browser to server how the communication happening between this client side to your server side okay if you know that then we will discuss which what is the method of the format you have to submit like what is this question mark is coming what are the different different type of uh, submit like get post put different different web method that is we are getting a little bit technical but before going into in that we have to know that what is the basic of a 
how the server is work from client side the communication between client and server okay tomorrow first we'll spend little bit uh, 10 to 15 minutes on the client server architecture then i'll going to display and uh, we're going to discuss about the form the form different different method how you can submit how you can do all these things then we'll after we complete the form we'll go for html then we we'll start the css okay yes, all the time all the time you are not submitting the form right all the times you, you are not going to submit the form sometimes if you click the button suppose check availability suppose you are entering one email id you check that this email id is exist or not exist that time you want to do some background operation you click on this click you want to do some background operation means you want to send the data to the server using the background you can call it ajax that will, uh, that will call ajax request means in the background you want to send the request to the server without submitting the form in that case if you want to take some action like search or you want to do some kind of client side operation this button is specially for client side operation you have to always remember normal type button means it's a special for client side operation means javascript if you want to do any kind of action or something then you have to do the button but if you are using the summit then it's always that you have to sending this data to a server clear right summit means i will remember i will explain tomorrow what are the different different attribute of a forms okay but you have to remember that this button tag button type is only for client side means for your javascript but this type submit for your server for this reset to reset the data this is this is whatever you told like this is the overview of a client server communication right but like yes, suppose whatever i am talking like i am talking in english you are able to understand right the same way yes, the data if you are going to pass from your client side to server side there is a communication channel for that okay you yes. cannot send a data directly to server to send a data to directly yes. server you need a method okay you need a basic hmm. format to send data from your client to server that we have to understand how you can, what are the different different type of data format you can send from your client to server because sometimes you want to because you if i open this one if i submit this one just a second let me open google okay if i type suppose i am typing something suppose i am typing hello world okay you can see that it's it's something q equal to something is going here right yeah. okay yeah, what we are going to call it this is some difference because you have to understand between the all this concept of query string tomorrow in the class i'm going to explain what are the different different type of communication method from your client side to server then we will understand the importance of this form otherwise you, you will not understand because this is our simple form right then we have to understand first client and client and server architecture and communication architecture then we will go for this forms architecture okay don't worry tomorrow i am going to explain this basic of the client and server and communication medium like get post put and all these things then we will uh, learn about the summit okay anyone any question someone if we want to group option within option means you want to inside group you have to add another group that is the question yes sir inside group i want to add one more group okay just a second eh? let me open we'll do it like now like like if you select the country then all the states will be loaded and inside uh, okay, okay, go let, let me do one thing let me copy this one and inside that i'll add it what will happen here you can see that is that anything happening no in html you cannot add nested option group you have only one option group okay for if whatever requirement you have right inside you have to fast load the country then state inside that city right for that we cannot achieve in select select only go okay. for 
two level of group means only one group means you can only add either option otherwise you can add a group you cannot add multiple inside that okay yes, sir. to achieve this kind of to achieve this kind of like whatever requirement you have we have to use a third party library for that if like if people are going for angular and react in future then you will learn how how we can design this control using different different library in that library we have this kind of option like you can add n number of item inside the item that we are going to display because the html is a basic one you can add an option otherwise you can add an option group this is up to you okay all the time your requirement cannot achieve by a html form okay just imagine yes. i'm talking about this one who is going to clear the multiple control and select right just imagine yes, sir. the same way it will display but there is some checkbox would be displayed at left hand side just imagine multi-select right yes okay I, i'll show you i'll show you one example i'll show you one example you have to you people have to understand how it's work there is a library called prime mg <clears throat> i'll show you uh, like uh, you can see it's a drop down right it's drop down normal drop down whatever you are seeing here is a normal drop down okay yes sir. Mm. as i told this drop down will make as a multi select right then i need to press yes. control to select multiple but if you use the library you can see that what is happening you can simply select here this is the beauty of a library all the time you can achieve the ui using the basic html css okay you can do whatever you can but yes sir if you are using the library then it will be easy right who is going to click the um, control and going to press all these things here you can see simple click all it's going to select everything right yes, for doing all this kind of stuff you need a library help either you go for prime mg Prime MG for Angular, Prime uh, React for React, Net, uh, React. If you go for Material Design for Material, different different library content, different different con different different uh, like side content, different different type of library. Based on your project, based on your feasibility, you have to use which library you want to use. But just always remember, all the time you cannot achieve all the control using the HTML uh, control. Okay, because you cannot do this. For that reason, you have to use the different different library. Okay. Yeah, third part First library yeah. is the last of our course. Then I'm going to display what are the different different library for that because we are, did not start the Bootstrap also, right? In Bootstrap also there is some rudiment uh, control also there. We can use that one. That will going to discuss when we are going for that chapter. Okay. Yes, sir. If you have any question, just let me know. We are going to wrap up all this. Sir, so this theory, uh, third party library is free, na? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just want to tell the same thing. I I told like feasibility right? Feasibility means yes, yes, sir. Feasibility means suppose uh, one of the time uh, like suppose your company has money to give the buy the license of the library. Just imagine Prime MG is free, but if you go for another suppose um, uh, that is one Kendo UI. There is a well known UI library called Kendo. That Kendo UI is totally yes. licensed because you have to purchase. But if you go for Prime MG, it's a free. that depend upon which library you are you are preferring or your company is preferring based on that we have to design the uh, library you have to use the library but as i know prime mg because we are also in our company we are also using the prime mg prime mg is a good one you can use in react you are also you can use in the angular you can use both places the prime mg that is completely free it's up to you how you can going to use it and prime mg the prime mg contain around um, 60 to 70 controls if i show you is contain all the controls like if you want to design a slider just imagine can you design this slider in html no you cannot okay in normal you, you don't have like this kind of uh, uh, slider suppose you want to design a calendar okay how you going to design a calendar okay html contain the calendar control that i will explain later but just imagine this kind of calendar you cannot design right and suppose you want to support this calendar multiple select calendar how you are going to do that do all these things at least you require a um, third party library because this prime mg contain n number of controls n number of controls you can use anything is predefined means all are like suppose you want to define a chip already you know the chip right 
this kind of tagging suppose you want to do a tag for that how you can do that you cannot do in html you can do the html there is no ready-made control but if you want to use this kind of you can develop this kind of control then you have to write the code now that's a lot of time it will yeah it will take a lot of time right you already know that writing all these things the styling uh, responsive all these things it will take time for that reason we have to use a automatic like like whatever you told right someone told like the you can see that someone this is the called cascading line uh, someone told like option content another option you can yes, see the I, ready I, made I, one right this is the ready made one yes australia content this is this one whatever you can you can do that simple yes this is called actually the use of uh, our um, ui library you can do it you can write your code you can achieve all these things but if you write and achieve this will take a lot, lot of time for that reason i am always suggesting you have to know the basic concept of a form this is how your forms work but actually in real time if you go for angular or react because anyhow you are going to work on any of the ui library right in future you have to use at least prime mg or material material design Material design, it's a design for, uh, it's a design for, um, by default given by the uh, <coughs> Google for Angular. This is a Angular ready-made one. But the problem is, this one contains very less control as compared to PrimeMG. Because PrimeMG, this is basic component, like uh, suppose you want to do autocomplete and batch, all these things content. But the same thing is content also here. The problem the problem is this this material has very limited controls as compared to prime mg it's up to you how we are going to do that is totally complete up to you how we are going to use the library but if you are going to use the library it is easy for you like suppose you want to create an editor suppose you want to create a blog and blog we are going to give you editor like this bold italic all these things you cannot do right you cannot do in html for that you have to write a lot of code and all these things but all these things are ready-made in a library. For that reason, my intention is now in HTML, you have to learn the basic, how actually it works. But in actually in the future, you have to know the, how the library actually work. To know how this library actually work, you have to the, know the basic concept of a HTML. What is this name attribute? What is this idea attribute? What is all these things you have to know? Okay.